years old. I was working in my um, honors year here in the, in Australia. We have this year after after year, final year of undergrad, which they call honors, which would kind of be like doing a research project in the U.S. Okay. So I did my honors at, at the Floor Institute, which is a, which is a big neuroscience institute in Austria, in, in Melbourne. And I was working on preclinical models of Alzheimer's. And one of the things that struck me was that there's so much biological uncertainty when we come to disorders, neurodegenerative disorders in general, but then disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and things which affect so much of the population. And we've, you know, therapeutics have been put into the clinic into phase one, phase two, phase three, and, but then nothing's worked. Um, and everybody's agreed that, you know, Alzheimer's is not just, uh, it's probably not just a single mechanism. It's probably a cascade of multiple things. But while I was working on that, I met somebody that was working on this a rare disorder. Um, but it got me thinking that, you know, we're out here addressing these problems with, with such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, where there's so much uncertainty. And I think definitely, you know, that research needs to be done. But on the flip side, we have a bunch of people that are suffering from these genetic disorders where we know what's going wrong. You know, we, we know exactly what's going wrong with them, um, why it's happening, but we, we just don't have the technology to solve that problem. And so I view it more, I mean, obviously all of these are biological problems, but I view the, the rare disease space specifically where people's patients suffer from monogenic disorders as an engineering problem. 